Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again with yet another DC Multiverse video, and today we're going to be checking out the new McFarlane Toys DC Direct Offshoot, the 7-inch Page Punchers line, which features a comic book and a figure, and this one's entitled Fighting the Frozen, hosting Mr. Freeze as the villain of said story, very different take on Mr. Freeze, Victorian deep sea diver mixed with insanity, looks pretty cool, a caveman Batman, that's right, we're going 65 million years into the past, or whatever it is, but uh, yeah, he looks pretty darn cool, as well as his sidekick, Caveman Robin. Whether or not it's Jason, Tim, Dick, or Damien, you go ahead and pick one, whichever one you want it to be, because I'm not going to tell you in the story, but I'll tell you the story in just a few. Now, there will be two versions of Batgirl. There will be a standard and then a platinum chase. Think of a platinum chase as a Funko Pop. It's rare. Will be randomly inserted. There's no specific store. The standard Batgirl will have a black cowl, as you can clearly see here. She looks pretty cool, right? The Platinum Chase will have a purple cowl, along with some other minor changes. We'll have the full look in just a few. But like I said, randomly inserted Chase Platinum figure. So, in either case, this will be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys, straight from the DC Direct 7-inch Page Punchers line. The brand new Fighting the Frozen, and all those really sweet clamshell old school cases, right? Check those out. Now before we get started, each character comes with a character cover, which features them on said cover, right? Batman... Mr. Freeze, Robin, and Batgirl, doesn't matter which one you get, Platinum or otherwise, it's the same cover. The story goes as such, Batman fighting the Frozen, specific for this toy line, which is pretty cool, right? Very Legends of the Dark Knight, Legends of Batman, very Kenner-ish, totally dig that. It features Mr. Freeze in the Victorian era, trying to save Nora, of course, that's what he usually does. His whole scientific experiments with freezing throws him 65 million years in the past. We'll just say that, right? Of course. And you have the young hero of the story, Robin, who discovers this wild man, Mr. Freeze, who's destroying the environment with all his freezing. He recruits Batman. He gets Batgirl and Batman, Robin, and Batgirl all set out to uh, basically kill Mr. Freeze, right? He doesn't take kindly that. He's trying to save his wife. I don't feel so bad for him in this sense. But old Batman of this time period ain't having it. And they absolutely wreck Mr. Freeze. Like, it's not even funny. Like, he's not getting up from this. He's not saving his wife anymore. And the story ends. Which, hey, wraps up with a nice bow. Is a new beginning. <laughs> Also, in the comic, you can look at all the DC Multi- I'm not giving them any more promotion, but hey, thanks for sending these out, McFarlane Toys. So, here's everything taken out of the packaging. So, you get five total figures, four of which are the mainstays, one of which being the Batgirl Platinum version. However, kind of noticed something, which we'll talk about in just a few. Now, with the standard Batgirl, you get two weapons. They're done nicely. They do have some paint on the stone-bladed weapons. There's nothing on the ties. Could have used a little bit more paint, but they're pretty good for what they are. And you have a bat grapple hook with a string, which I absolutely love. It's all one solid color, but I love the string on it. That's very Kenner. That's very Man Bat from Batman the Animated Series, for those that remember, right? I totally dig that. That's very cool to see. You got the prongs, no paint, unfortunately, but uh, you can wrap it up and put it on someone's belt if you'd like. Wink, wink. More on that. Batgirl herself in the black cowl version is pretty cool. This is a very interesting line to me, and in hand, I'm going to tell you honestly, it's very cool. I'm actually pretty stoked. These all have fantastic original sculpts to them. The hair, the braids. As you can clearly see on the cowl, if they were kind of to reduce the ears on this one a little bit with all the stitchings, you could have made this one Catwoman, right? She's got plenty of head articulation, but I'm saying, lose the cape, you would have had a, another character, basically, but uh, you can have two characters, truth be told. Nice articulation overall, you got the bat symbol. For the amount of paint that these figures have, I'm actually impressed. This is a step in the right direction 
for McFarland toys. You have little nuances, little things that are painted, which are nice. She's got peg holes on the bottom of her feet. She's got a really cool cape. And I particularly love right here, this little spiral, very spawn-like. Absolutely love the angular, just perfect. Absolutely love it. She does lose a little bit of paint on the backside. The cape's covering it. It's not a complete loss. Most of the party, of course, is on the front. Right here, the paint to the plastic to the rubber doesn't really match from the crotch piece to the legs, as you can clearly see. But truth be told, she's kind of a mishigash of all kinds of tattered clothing and everything else. So it kind of works, but work on that a little bit, right? Again, the articulation pretty solid. You can get them in all the different poses that you like, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, the wrists. These figures actually have some of the greatest ab articulation, which is a much improvement for McFarlane toys. Some of the legs on these figures can get kind of hindered by the rubber diaper, which kind of goes in the opposite direction. Usually it's one or the other, right? Of course, again, double jointed knees, nothing at the thigh, nothing at the boots, but she does have the toe, which Again, I'll say over and over, ever since wave one, when we first started looking at them, if you can match the pins better on the feet, please do that because it's kind of jarring to have a black pin in your flesh colored foot. Now, the platinum back girl has the same weapons, but this time around with the grapple, it's brown, as you can clearly see. So you got black grapple, brown, doesn't really matter. It's the same black string. The purple cowled bat girl is pretty cool. She also has tattoos every which way. So to me, in my little head canon, even though it doesn't really adhere to the storyline presented in the comic book, you could technically have two bad girls. One could be Cassandra Kane, right? And the other one could be Barbara Gordon, which kind of looks like that, right? With the purpleness and all that jazz. So Cassandra Kane, Barbara Gordon, whatever you want to say, nonetheless, they do pose really nicely. I like the weapons. You kind of got like the Batgirl caveman twins, right? You could totally do that. So hopefully for those of you out there that want the purple, you can hopefully find her fairly easy. But uh, in either sense, I kind of like the purple one better because it kind of looks cooler with all the colors when you have all the figures lined up. Next up is Robin. He comes with a knife. It's nicely painted for such a tiny little weapon. It's a bone wrapped. And then you got a different color for the blade. Totally dig that. Very well done. He also has a giant Robin staff. So that way you could kind of think of him as Tim Drake because Tim usually has the staff, right? That's what I think of. But it's nicely painted. Wish they could have painted the wrappings right there. But you have a Batman arrowhead on top. That's corny and I love it. And he holds the weapons nicely. You get nice poses out of these figures because the articulation has been, again, vastly improved in looking at Robin, right? Tim Drake all the way around because of the R, because of the staff, but you can say whatever Robin you want. It doesn't matter. He does have a little bit less going on as far as the paint. I like the hair, the mask. It's fun, right? Could have used a little bit more paint here and there. I say that every time with McFarlane Toys. No, I don't like to paint my figures. I like when companies paint the figures, right? I'm not good at it. I'm terrible at it, in fact. But you have a little bit of a Robin skull right there. You got the classic 90s R, done all caveman style. You got a Batman tattoo on his chest. You got random arrowheads. Those are all painted nicely, so no complaints. And you also have weapon storage which is pretty cool for his little bone knife thingy right there. And that stays in there very nicely. And I definitely dig that. He's the only one that has weapon storage. And I think with the Batman, as we'll soon see, it's kind of a bummer. Peg holes. He's got that offset pin right there in his flesh colored foot. These are little things that I wish they would improve upon. It just would look better, right? Just a little bit more cohesive. But yeah, overall, it's a pretty solid looking figure. I would say he's kind of more the lackluster one in terms of the paint. Pretty great articulation for the head, right? Not going to knock it. Left, right, up, down. And the little Ninja Turtle bandana doesn't get in the way. The arms, because of his shoulder pauldron on one side, yeah, that's definitely going to hinder. But this side definitely works a whole heck of a lot better. And like I said, the ab crunch... That looks great. A-OK -okay, number one. Totally digging that. They're, they're listening. Hopefully. Fingers crossed, right? Now, he does have double-jointed knees on this side. 
I'm kind of running into it being a little bit tough to move around. Maybe you consider heating these up if you hit the same sort of situation. But if you move the other side, you can clearly see, yes, he does have semblance of double jointed. It's not total, but it's there. He's got a lot of ruffles in his pants. You got the feet, yada, yada, the wrists. He looks good. Overall, and I'm happy to say that this is a really cool Robin, Caveman Robin, to go with your Caveman Batman. Now, before we get to old Bats, we're going to look at the villain, Mr. Freeze. And he is one of my favorites out of the wave. He's ridiculous looking, and it's kind of fun. In fact, he's so ridiculous that his backpack it just is wild. I totally dig it. It's got the gun. All the wires are silver. It's pretty much two colors. You got this really cool green with a little bit of a wash. You got all these Victorian levers and wheels and all that jazz is really cool hydraulic pistons and whatnot i totally dig it i like the color to it again it fits with this version that they've created for mr freeze if they would add some paint that would have been even better you're not gonna run any problems with the wire it's very malleable you're not gonna have any problems you got the peg right there that'll fit onto his back mr freeze himself i've heard the comments totally looks like a big daddy yeah i'm gonna all agreement with you i just thought immediately i'm like oh it's an old school deep diver suit right which totally is he's interesting it's a different take for mr freeze but i'm totally on board with this wackadoo-ness of this dc multiverse right i like the eyes you get lots of articulation in his big old domey head i love it very cool you got a little bit of blue paint underneath there it looks like pressed metal i thought this was more like feathering up here which i'm pretty sure it is to go with his suit kind of make it more like a thermal kind of suit right i thought it was ice too at one point you got all these wires circuitry you got the hole in the back that's where his backpack will go belts the whole shebang again love the way the metal the silver everything looks all the rivets that's pretty darn cool right here on his chest you get a little bit more paint for all the different gauges and whatnot some of the gauges are unpainted again that would have elevated it. You got these freeze power canisters right here on the side, which I'm assuming they are, right? He's got his big old knees, his knee pads, his clod hopper shoes, peg holes on the bottom right there. He does have single joints all the way around, and I'm not complaining about that. Big old purple gloves. He's nicely designed. I actually really like the way that this looks and the way he moves. It's really not hindered, but you get a big, chunky, heavy figure, and I totally appreciate that. Again, single joints, but he'll swivel at the elbows. The wrist gave me no problem. The big old diaper piece, which totally looks good. He's got single jointed knees. And then the feet, which have big old clod hopper toe articulation as well, if you want to go ahead and use it. At least it's there if you want it. The ab crunch is amazing on this. You would never think that this would move as well as it does. The waist a pretty solid figure i gotta give it to him they've really improved go ahead grab the backpack install it onto his back right there stays nice and snug get the gun going in his one open hand the other hand is a fist of course there's no trigger on this which is kind of odd because then what is it like a squeezy kind of thing you just that would get kind of cumbersome right but it is what it is it fits in his hand it looks nice but it's kind of weird the way it's angled it's always kind of off angled if that makes any sense but backpack installed wires going every which way gun in hand which yes that is a gun i don't know if wb caught that but let's not tell them let's keep that going right but overall yeah very happy with this guy second favorite figure in the wave mr freeze definitely recommend him but the first favorite of course is batman batman comes with all these bludgeoning weapons right here which are nicely painted nicely done of course it's half of a Batman symbol. Even 65 million years in the past, Bruce Wayne, or whatever his name is, has to customize his weapons and gadgets, right? You also get a Batman axe. Look at that. But again, the weapons are solid. They're not gummy. That's another thing I want to point out. Could have used a little more paint on the wrappings. That would have been kind of cool. But otherwise, it's nicely done, and I'm really happy it's not like a, like a wimpy kind of gummy weapon, right? Now, Batman himself. Yeah, that's... That's a caveman Batman. It actually reminded me when I first saw this of when Batman Bruce Wayne got transported because of Darkseid's Omega Beams. Remember that whole thing, which I think they're kind of playing off of? You got some really cool bat ears. They're nice and gummy and rubber. You get plenty of head articulation out of it. He's very grizzled. He's very battle-worn. And I totally appreciate the look. You can kind of paint him up yourself if you want to do that. But I think he looks great. Batman symbol and all. The color, the flesh tone... 
is perfect. And I like that he has cuts, like healed cuts sculpted in. That's awesome. That is what I expect from McFarlane Toys. Awesome. Just freaking awesome. And I love the gauntlets right here. Those are sharp. Be careful on that. Those are not gummy at all. Could have used a little paint on the wrappings. Yada, yada. I won't beat a dead horse. But I love the gadgetry on the belts. You got caveman batarangs and arrowheads. You got a little bit of rope right there, which you can install this onto his belt if you'd like. It's kind of just using the rope itself and finagling it on there. Weapons in hand, he stands pretty dang mighty. I totally love this guy. Underneath the loincloth, thank God he's got some underoos on. And you got this really cool, it looks like cloth goods. It's not, it's all plastic. The cape is nicely done. Could have used a little bit more paint, maybe a wash to it on the backside. Not too much paint, but overall with all the knee pads and right here, his little moccasins and those actually painted all the arrowheads right there, his feet, toe articulation with the appropriate pin, right? Go figure, peg holes and all that. It's a pretty stellar wave. I can't believe it. When I first saw this, I was like, oh no, what? And then you play around with these, you figure out the articulation, which he has an amazing ab crunch on it, which is stellar to see. These are, this is a solid wave. I'm thoroughly impressed. It's not something I immediately thought I ever needed, nor wanted, nor asked for, but it harkens back to those Kenner days, and I loves it for that. I think it's a wackadoo, bat poop, crazy wave, and it works in every sense. From the comic, you have all the characters. Kids can play with this if you want. Collectors can collect them if you want. More of this, please. Articulation is stellar. The paint is fine. For this type of figure, 25 bucks with a comic book and everything else, I'm nitpicking it to death, right? But I'm pointing out things that I would like to see. Just a couple improvements. But over and over, I'll say, it's a pretty wackadoo line. Mr. Freeze is bat poop crazy. Doesn't matter. It's freaking awesome. And where these figures really shine are with monsters, dinosaurs, caveman era. You can even do robots. It's DC Multiverse. It doesn't matter. But it looks rad, right? Even having Robin, this version of Robin, you can ride a dinosaur. Doesn't matter. So if you went Mattel and you got all these Jurassic Park dinosaurs lying around like I do, It'll make for a fun display, I'm just saying, right? Especially this Robin with all the red on his dinosaur. It's his own little Barney, right? Mr. Freeze can get eaten ASAP. That'll be a quick and easy fix to get rid of him. And this Batman looks really nice with He-Man. So if you wanted to go Masterverse with the whole Mattel thing, I don't know why we're talking about Mattel so much, but yeah, it looks pretty darn cool. So you can definitely make this work with a lot of different things. So... That will wrap it up for my look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Direct 7-inch Page Punchers Wave featuring the new comic book, Fighting the Frozen, which is exclusive to this toy line. You have a really cool, simplified story. Mr. Freeze is just up to things in a Victorian era. He gets thrown back 65 million years, and that's the deal with the Bat family of that era. You don't need more than that. It's very cool. Again, very Kenner reminiscent and I'm just very happy with it. But you've heard my thoughts. So now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse page punchers. And again, thank you to McFarlane for sending these out for the purposes of this video. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, yeah, bring on more wackadoo-ness. This was a lot of fun. When they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.